prepare a cash budget of a company for April, May and June 2016 by using the following information. They've given us sales, which we know is a receipt, purchases, which is going to end up being a payment, wages is a payment, expenses is a payment. You are further informed that 10% of the purchase, 10% of the purchase is cash and therefore we know that 90% of the purchase will be on credit. What about sales? They have told us 20%. 20% is cash and the remaining 80%, 80% is credit. Now, they've gone further and told us the average collection period of the company is half a month. That means out of all the credit sales, half, half will end up being in the same month, same month. And the logic is that if you are selling, if you are selling 90,000 in the month of April, First of all, 20% is going to be cash sales. Out of the 80%, which is going to be credit sales, whatever you're selling in the first half of April will be received in April. Whatever you're selling in the second half of April will be received in May. That's why I'm saying half is going to be the same month and the other half is going to be next month. Okay. And Half of 80 gives us 40%. So we've got 40% here and 40% here. Then they've told us that wages are paid half monthly. Okay, so when they're telling us an expense being paid half monthly, where, we, where it's not already 80% of something, you can simply add the previous month and current month and divide by 2. Okay, it'll give you the answer you're looking for. Anyway, uh, we have cash budget for the quarter ending June 2016 All right. and obviously you need to keep in mind that um, first of all, there's a separation there, even if you don't see it. And secondly, we are talking about three months, April, May, June. Okay. Three months, there are 12 months in a year. And that gives us one by four and one by four means one quarter. Okay. So in your question, if it is for six months, then you can just say six months ending dash or half year ending dash. That's entirely up to you. Particulars and they've asked us to do April, May and June. We begin with the opening balance and thereafter we have receipts. Okay, and under receipts, what we saw above was sales and everything else going forward also is to do with the breakup of sales. Our last adjustment is to do with cash. Okay, so we have cash sales, cash sales and the next is collection, collection from debtors and under that we have same month, same month, okay, and next month, okay, next month. Now, the percentages corresponding to each cash sales is 20%. So, I'm going to write 20% over there. And similarly, over here, we have 40% and 40%. Okay, this is going to help us in our calculation. Right. Now, 
going forward we have nothing else in receipts okay so this can be total receipts and now we start with payments and under payments the first usual suspect is cash purchases okay after that we can pay the creditors and this time around it's easy cash purchases they have told us is 10 percent cash purchases is okay and i'm going to squeeze it in here 10 percent for creditors it is 90 percent okay and they've also said one month okay so both of these things i need to keep in mind then going forward we have payment for wages okay so i'm going to write down wages okay and they have mentioned rent 500 is paid monthly and they've told us a number there so i'm going to immediately write the word rent and everywhere i'm going to put 500 500 All right. Now, they have told us that there are sales, there are purchases, there are wages, there are expenses. Now, keep in mind that a rent is not mentioned upstairs. Wages is, but if it's not mentioned and we see expenses, then we can assume that it includes rent. And that means we can have one row for all the other expenses. And since they don't tell us anything, we can assume this is also on a monthly basis. Okay, but we're going to take the number above and subtract 500 everywhere. So we have to take 6,000, 6,000, 5,000. So it's going to be 5,500, 5,500. Okay, so 5,500. 5,500 and 4,500. Okay, so we are done with other expenses. We are done with rent. Okay, now we need to worry about, uh, let's start from the top. Okay, we have cash and bank balance given to us as 15,000. So that is our opening balance. I'm putting it down as 15,000. And we have an adjustment for that, okay, which a lot of people are finding complicated because we want to maintain the same balance anything in excess goes into a fixed deposit so first let's calculate the closing balance and see if there is excess then we'll decide whether or not we need to do an ft but because they've spoken about an ft we need to have fixed deposit as a payment in under the payments section okay i think we're done with all the payments now i can write down total payments total payments and then of course we are able to calculate our closing balance now going back upstairs right we have we are done with the opening balance we have cash sales as 20 percent okay cash sales means you will take the same month april is april so 90,000 into 20 percent, 85,000 into 20 percent, 80,000 into 20 percent. So you please do it on the calculator. All right. And let's see if we can have both of them together. Yes. Okay. So 20 percent of 90,000 gives us 18,000. 20 percent of 85,000 gives us 17,000. 20% of 80,000 gives us 16,000. Okay. And that finishes our cash sales. Collection from debtors also, we have 40% in the same month. Okay. That means we can literally multiply 40% again into all of these numbers April, May, June. So 40% into 90,000. Do the math on the calculator, you'll get 36,000. Okay, 40% of 87,000, I'm not sure. I'm going to use the calculator. Okay, so 40% of 87,000 
35,000 gives us 34,000 okay so we're going to end up with 34,000 here okay and I know for eights are 32 but please use the calculator you'll end up with 32,000 for this now that we have the same month we are in a position to go ahead and do the math for the next month okay so next month 40 percent means instead of in the month of april half of the credit sales are collected in may that means whatever we are selling in april from the credit sales half is in april half is in may that means in april's who's are we collecting half of april's and half of march okay so we have to concentrate at this point of time on these numbers okay and again 40 percent again 40 percent multiplied into all of these numbers okay so 40 percent of seventy five thousand is going to give you thirty thousand okay is going to give you 30,000 then 40% of 90,000 is going to give you 36 and mind you that is from here okay and the same logic applies 40% of uh, 85,000 is what gives you 34,000 so these numbers are okay they're coming from there so 36,000 34,000 right? so understand you can do the math again but it's literally like this so you can just place it and why is it happening because both of them are 40 40 now back upstairs we are done with same month we are done with next month we are done with everything in total receipts now we need to look at payments cash purchases is 10 percent I'm going to purchases April, May, June. I can see 50, 45, 35. 10% of 50,000 gives me 5,000. 10% of 45,000 is 4,500. 10% of 35,000 is 33,500. Okay, so we have 5,000, 4,500, and 3,500. 5,000, 4,500, and 3500 then as far as creditors are concerned it's one month later that means april's credit purchases will be paid in may may's will be paid in june that means who's will be paid in april march okay so all of the 90 percent we have to take 90 percent of all of these numbers all right so we take the calculator and of course you'll have that option to lock 0.9 or 90 percent into into and then go down the line and use a shortcut i do not have that option so i'm going to do it bit by bit okay so we are talking about 42,000 into 9 okay and i'm just setting 42,000 into 90 percent so 37 800 okay we have 37 800 under creditors here and then upstairs we have okay 90 percent of 50,000 which is 45 okay so I'm just going to quickly go downstairs and write 45,000 interestingly if you add both of these up hmm, same month next month 45 and 5 you what you're going to end up with is the original 50 so in that way you know you're correct okay you're going to end up with the original 50 which is here anyway uh, 45,000 45,000 into 0.9 which gives you 40,500 okay which gives you 40,500 and you are now done with cash purchases we are done with creditors we now need to worry about wages and because wages is half this month half next month if it was 60 40 we would literally have to do 
separate section for this month okay we would have had to do this month next month percentage wise we would have to multiply 60 percent 40 percent upstairs okay but because it is half and half 50 50 you could do 50 50 also but it's unnecessary what we can simply do is take an average okay so for example in april we are getting half of march and a half of april which is as good as adding both of these and dividing it by two all right so we are going to take 22,000 plus 24,000 and it's as good as average but I'm going to do it here 22,000 plus 24,000 okay which gives us this upon 2 okay and the logic is you're getting half you're getting half from March half of March is 11,000 half of April is 12,000 so either way you're going to end up with 23,000 Right, so we simply place 23,000 for the month of April going forward for the month of May. Okay, again, we're looking at wages. Again, you take average. That average is going to give you 22. Okay, again, the average over here is going to give you 19. Do the math. Okay, 22,000 and 19,000. Okay. So we are done with the receipts, we are done with the payments, okay, everything has been factored in. We have looked after purchases, we have looked after sales, we have looked after wages, we have looked after expenses, we have factored in this, we have factored in this, 500 also we have done, opening balance also we have done, now we just have to worry about the fixed deposit, okay, so first of all, we are in a position to calculate total receipts across. We may as well do it now. Okay, so I'm doing it on the calculator in the video. So you all can do it together as well. We have 30,000 plus 36,000. Okay, 36,000 plus 18,000, which gives us 84,000. Okay, we have 84,000. And we repeat 36 plus 34, 36,000 plus 34,000 plus 17,000 is equal to 87,000. Equal to 87,000. Similarly, we add these 16, 32, 34. Okay, so 16,000 plus 32,000 plus 34,000 is equal to 82,000. Now, as far as our first month is concerned, for the month of April, we take the opening balance and add the total receipt. So 15,000 plus 82,000 minus the payments. Okay, and Let's do them individually and see what happens. We have minus 5,000, minus 37,800, minus 23,000, minus 500, minus 5,500. Okay, which gives us 25,200. But we know that the closing balance must anyhow be, anyhow be 15,000. So anything more, okay, I'm writing down the closing balance over here as 15,000 because they have said that it has to be 15,000. Anything more than that goes to the fixed deposit. Okay, and I'm going to be very careful and check whether my calculation really is correct. Okay, so I'm starting with 15,000. Okay, we add 18,000, we add 36,000, we add 30,000. We subtract, okay, we subtract 5,000, we subtract 37,800, we subtract 23,000, we subtract 500, we subtract 5,500, okay, we are getting 27,200. Now, from this 27,200, 
we subtract 15,000. The excess is 12,200, which is our fixed deposit. Okay, so we put that money in the fixed deposit, 12,200. Now the same 15,000, which is the closing balance here, will become the opening balance over there. Okay, now we repeat the same thing. We have 15,000, we add 87,000, which is the total receipts, and then we start subtracting the payments. So 4,500 minus 45,000 minus 22,000 minus 500, which is rent, minus 5,500, which is other expenses, 24,500. And again, anyhow, we want the closing balance to be 15,000. That means the excess is again going to go to the fixed deposit. So again, I'm going to subtract 15,000. Okay, and I end up with 9,500. And again, closing balance of one month is going to become opening balance of the other month. So we have 15,000 over here. Okay, and one more time, we will take 15,000 plus 82,000 minus 3,500 minus 40,500 minus 19,000. Okay, be careful. 19,000 minus 500 minus 4,500. Okay, and we end up with 29,000, which is again more than 15,000. So the difference will go into a fixed deposit and that's 29 minus 15, which gives us 14,000. Now, only once we have all of this in place, are we in a position to calculate total payments. Okay, and I'm only going to do it for the month of April. You all can do for the remaining. And I'm also going to show you how to check whether what we have done is correct. Okay, so we have for the month of April payments starting at 5000 to which we add 37800, 37800, again, you have to be careful on your calculator, 5000 plus 37800 plus 23000 plus 500 plus 5500 plus 12,200 okay which gives us 84,000 right and academically in sums when you get such a smooth number you feel happy okay you feel you're correct and just think about it you have an opening balance of 15,000 you have a total receipts of 84,000 you have a total payments of 84,000 okay so obviously if you start with 15 you receive 84 you pay 84 you'll end up with 15 okay so you will know that you're correct when your total receipts equal your to equal to your total payments and obviously this is only going to happen in sums where they're asking you to maintain a certain amount as closing balance okay so we calculate the closing balance under normal circumstances by taking opening balance, which we consider A. We add the receipts, which is considered as B. And we subtract the payments, which we consider C. And therefore, we say that opening balance is A plus B minus C. Okay, I hope everybody has understood. In case people haven't, please feel free to comment. Thank you.